in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to take this sketch and bring it all the way into Procreate to a final rendered artwork. So let's get our sketchbook ready. It doesn't have to be anything special, it doesn't have to be a fancy kind of special kind of sketchbook at all, it can be on a piece of paper. What we're looking for here is a rough idea um, with a certain amount of detail, it doesn't have to be a finished sketch and then we're going to bring it to Procreate and see what we can do there. So I'm going to open up my sketchbook and I've started a sketch here that is a double page uh, design. I've already started it here, it's kind of going to be a landscape few people in it and a few other extra details that I'm going to do there now. Let's get a bit of finer details in what I want to design here. So now I'm at a point where I'm pretty much happy with the illustration that I've got enough detail in that I can work from in Procreate. Um, I'm going to draw this up from scratch in Procreate using this as my template. Scene is kind of like a post-apocalyptic kind of. I, I don't actually know fully, and that's what's kind of cool about it. Um, it might actually evolve as I bring it into Procreate. You see, anything I've done here uh, can be um, can be modified as I go on in Procreate. So if I don't want this ship to be there, I can move that. I can add things in, um, but it's really just acting as a template for me. So the next thing we want to do is to bring it into Procreate by taking a photograph of it. So by taking a picture, it's literally just getting your iPhone, getting your iPad, taking a photograph in the best lighting possible, as close up as possible, and try to frame it off as if it's going to be the final illustration itself. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I just took that with the iPad itself. So if I go into my photographs, you can see that's what it looks like. Now, I'm still got my edges of my desk there. That's no problem. All I can do is just crop that in as I bring it into Procreate. It'll make everything a lot crisper and I'll give you an impression of the final piece when we get to that stage. So now we open up Procreate and we are greeted by our gallery. So what we want to do now is create a canvas from scratch. So we got to decide what kind of orientation we want our canvas, what size and what will work best for our illustration in general. This illustration was done in a sketchbook that is A5 in size and it's going across two pages. So in that sense, then it's going to be an A4 landscape size. So I'm going to keep it to that in Procreate. Now I could always double that up to A3 or go even bigger. You remember the bigger canvas you go, the bigger file size will be and the less layers you'll have to work with in Procreate. So, and we'll pick the canvas we want. So you've already got options loaded up here in Procreate by default, such as square, which is great for Instagram, 4K, Resolution A4 is there, which is what we want. But you can also add your own canvas sizes here. Um, I've, I've added A3 and I've added story size, which is good for doing Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts um, kind of illustrations, which you get this kind of a size here and here. Uh, if you want to create a new canvas, you just go up and hit the plus button here. And what you can do is you can put in the pixel dimensions or the millimeter dimensions of the canvas. You can pick the color profile of the canvas, whether you want an RGB or CMYK, and there's a lot of profiles there, which you can get into. Um, also your time-lapse settings, you can have different outputs of your time-lapse, such as 2K, 4K. Um, you can also have canvas properties here, such as the background color or the background uh, color or the background hidden as well. So there's a few options you can do there when creating a new canvas. But because we have A4 already done, I'm just gonna select that and it pops open like this. Now our illustration is more landscape. In order to twist our canvas, simply just doing that, okay? And we want to get that more or less like so. Perfect, okay, I'm gonna bring it back down a bit so we can kind of see the null area there, the outside area. Perfect. Next, we wanna bring in our illustration. So I'm gonna to go to the spanner tool here and I'm gonna to go to add and I'm gonna to go to insert a photo. And this opens up your library. So you just select the photograph that you took, which is this one here. And that drops that in onto the canvas there. And you see you have these blue circles on the edges here. These are scale points. So you can scale up and down what you've dragged on. And at the moment we are scaling uniform, but you can also scale freeform 
you can distort or you can warp so that allows you to do certain different properties with the illustration that is brought in so for example if i pick the, pick the sort it allows me to really warp and distort the illustration there but i don't want that i just want to scale it up really to meet the edges of the canvas as much as possible so i'm going to go back to uniform and i'm going to scale until i get it into a point that i want fill point i'm going to fill it around here okay so our illustration is in now and it is set to what i'd like to work with so next i'm going to create a new layer above that if you want to have good management of your layers you can rename each layer by clicking on the layer and hitting rename so we can call this original art now that's if you want to be very organized you can always see from the little thumbnail here what the art is or what's on that layer um, i don't normally name all layers I normally name the highlights and the shadows layer, and that's more or less it. But in this instance, I'm gonna name this original art so we know what that one is. Um, what I like to do next is hit this button here. This will bring up your opacity and your different um, filters that you can use on that layer. But all I want to do is instead of using one of the filters here, I just wanna bring the illustration down. I don't want it too imposing. So I'm gonna bring it down 50% or so. Okay, that's perfect. So now that we've got our illustration in, the opacity down, I'm gonna to go to the layers and hit new layer. And I'm just gonna have that layer above original art and I'm actually gonna rename this and call it ink. So this is gonna be just our ink layer. So it's what we're gonna actually draw on in Procreate. And we go select the brush that we wanna use. So selecting a brush, is all down to preference. It's whatever you like to use and what you uh, get used to and, and just what fits your style really. Um, I like to use the inking brush in the inking selection here. Um, and I like to use syrup. Some people prefer to use studio pen or they might like to use marker, but I kind of have a, a bit of a, a, a kind of a mix sometimes within these uh, uh, inks here. Uh, but for the most part, I like to use syrup. And the reason why is because syrup just has a, a lovely flow to it and lovely feel to it. Um, and it, it responds really well to pressure. So I'm gonna use syrup going forward. So let's start. I like to jump straight in. I'm going to bring my level down over here with the pen. And we keep the opacity at 100%. Let's work on the detail here. So if I'm happy with that line size, maybe a little bit bigger, um, I can work with that, move, move on. So I'm gonna start drawing this character here. And the great thing about Procreate is things can be changed on the fly. So if there's something I did in the sketch that not working out or it's inaccurate or just it's just something that I want to change I can just do it and edit it really quickly um, I'm here going between the eraser tool as well where it needs be and just kind of flowing along working with the illustration as best as possible just using the two fingers to undo see I'm just making edits as I go so now I'm just adding a bit of detail to the fit to the head here this is kind of a wool cap so these are the grooves of the wool cap I'm putting in and I'm going to continue those up the top. It can be a bit, a bit boring, but at the same time, you don't have to think too much about it. I'm worrying about being super accurate here or anything like that. The beauty of it is, I'm going to just 
edit it away at any stage. Okay, so I'm gonna just hit this little tick button here to take away the original sketch just to see how I'm doing. Okay, we're still at early stages, so I'm gonna move on. Um, I like getting the uh, the main ink areas done as well, first and foremost, and not worrying about too much detail even at this stage, and then going in and refining as I go. So near the end, you'll see that I can really start to make proper edits. I'm adding a bit more pressure to the page just for this area here now. I'm getting, I like thick black lines, personally. Um, this is gonna be a badge of some sort. I still don't know what this is fully as an illustration. Um, as I said, it could be post-apocalyptic. He's holding a, um, a cannon shell or a missile or something like that. And um, they're all dressed in winter clothes, so this could go anywhere. <laughs> we'll see. So right now I'm just adding in some creases and a little bit more detail. This is gonna be a zip. I zoom back out. So he has on mittens. This is gonna be the thumb of the mitten over here. And we have our shell here, which is the um, the ordnance that needs to be drawn in. And I'm going to draw a line and hold to get that straight line like that. And I'm going to draw curve and hold to get a, a decently accurate curve there. And same up here, I'm going to draw and hold to get the top of the missile or the shell. And here and hold to get now that kind of looks a little weird so I'm gonna undo those and oh, I'm a bit <laughs> I'm a bit shaky here now so I'm gonna flip the whole canvas and draw from this angle and that's what I love about Procreate is just being able to flip and just draw from the angle that you want to get it at okay now we're gonna draw the, the mitten here so that's being that and because this is one of those extra large mittens it doesn't have any definition on the hands really so it's 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 um it's kind of like all one unit almost okay so that's that i think this needs another line there just to add that yeah okay that looks that's, that's looking okay happier with that so we'll start on the next character start on a coat coming up and what this is, is kind of like it's got a hoodie to the back and she has got some hair that's coming down like so. And I'm going to try and refine her face a bit more feminine. worry about hair detail just yet or anything like that. I only want to get this in and on. She's got one of these peaked kind of hat hats. Like that. I'll figure out this part in, the, in a moment and Okay, great. Now, this guy is a little bit more ruggedy looking. Is that even a word, ruggedy? But anyway, he's gonna he's got a, a kind of a beret or some sort of a hat, like Peaky Blinder hat or something to that effect. Okay. Okay, that's another character done. Well, when I say done, as in, the basics done. This guy here has, I've kind of had an intention of this guy to have some sort of like a wool, not a wool, a, a wolf skin kind of a, an ensemble on him. 
So he's got a, like a Russian hat kind of thing. With the fur going down the side. And uh, like so. And then this is where the emblem is going to come in again. And he's going to be a little bit more mysterious. finish off. I, I kind of intended this guy to have a beard but I'm not feeling it now so let's just get the wool or the wool skin kind of thing he has on here going and what we'll do is make it look like he's got some sort of a neck piece on and we'll worry about the face then after that. Now in the background then so we're motoring well background then we have loads of trees and the ship uh, personally I love doing trees I just have this kind of one tree that I like doing and it's a evergreen tree <laughs> it's really easy to do it's just doing this and just adding on some textures and detail below like that I just love doing this tree um, but you know I'm not just gonna use this as the one tree it's gonna use I'm going to use uh, other types as well, but it's going to be the basis for, for how we're looking. Uh, yeah, so let's get a couple more in there now. I'll exaggerate on this texture as well, of course. That's it. And let's get down to the end here. So this is kind of like near the shore. So I want to get the foreground, middle ground and background. So I consider I suppose this the middle ground at the moment. And uh, it's just a scene where the ship has kind of crashed, crashed the ground and uh, something is going on. <laughs> so let's get the uh, rough elements in here. I think we could have like flotsam on the water here, or sorry, flotsam and jetsam as they say, in the water and round about just to show that there's some um, crash, uh, damage or whatever flying about the place. And this is going to be the, where the ship has kind of come aground. Add in some rocks, terrain, things like that. Another tree. Whoops, I did a bit there. I could have just deleted that, but sometimes I don't just redraw it. Okay, and we can start adding in some more items here. I kind of see a bit of rubble or something like that going on in the background. Now the ship. Um, so I need to get a horizon line as well for a start and the ship is going to be above so I'm just going to draw the ship first that didn't work so that, well, no, that wasn't a bad line actually first one so let's try and see if we can get something that whoop, Nope, doesn't work. So let's try it again. Yeah, happy with that. And this is the front part. Like so, and let's get the top. Oops. Top parts. Bring that across. It'll work from here. It's amazing how illustrations can just change so fast when you're in Procreate and an idea may change completely. This is what I really like about it so the thing that you thought was going to work out might not actually be cool or work out and you can change that straight up. Now, okay so there's this chimney stack and we have a 
some port holes. That's not too bad. And then we have, of course, the, the crack in the side of the ship where the smoke is coming out. Um, so I'm going to try and make this as good as possible just to see that it is a crack. Um, now I can fill that in as well if I want. I'm just going to leave it open as it is there now. And there's our smoke. Now I like to do my smoke, my smoke either in a flat color or sometimes I like to actually draw it out and do it in, in high detail. But for the moment I'm just going to leave it um, I'm going to leave it as is um, or what I could do is alternatively get the layer above or just create a new layer above and draw it on a separate layer so I can decide to turn off or on, on or off the inks um, depending on what I want to do with it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to just get the smoke and start drawing the billow out like this, follow it out. There we go. Okay, so that's the smoke. And I'll go back to the previous layer of ink. I'm actually going to rename this smoke layer to smoke so I don't forget. So actually naming your layers is quite a good idea. It is smart. Um, I'll go back here and just draw into a few more trees here in the background. those guys in and then we have a horizon over here or our line that will indicate there we go okay all right now let's zoom out and click off the original art layer and see how we're looking okay we got all the major lines in I've spotted things already that I'm not happy with which is great mainly the facial features, but that's normally the case with me. I normally go back in and, and redefine. Um, and what I can do now is start to refine. So let's go into this guy. So now I'm gonna go back in and focus on the details. So what I don't like is just the placement of the eyes, just how the face is on this guy here um, and, and that. So in order to fix things, you can do it a lot of different methods. What I like to do is for, for something like this where I know that the eyes, the mouth and everything is clear, are clearly too high and they're a little bit too small. I'll go in to adjustments. I'll go into adjustments and I will go to liquify. And from here, I can select different pressure gauges, sizes, uh, distortion, etc. for the liquify tool. I'm currently on push. Um, I don't really go to much of the other guys because I like push because of it's just the way you can literally push things around. So for example, if I want to just slightly move things around a little bit, push them in a bit, push them out a bit, make them bigger, make them smaller, I can do that here and adjust the pressure of course as well as I'm doing it. Uh, the pressure setting I have is normally pretty high, but um, that is kind of what I like to do first. Uh, also in tandem and that, I can go to over here to uh, the select tool and what I'm going to do is pick freehand and from freehand then I'm going to select by drawing and holding all around the eyes, the mouth and finish up on that grey circle that you can see here and then I'll hit the arrow tool here and that allows me then to have this as a selection. Now I'm still on the one layer so if I leave go or leave this any point in this layer, it's going to affect that part and it's going to be merged with that artwork. But what I want to do is I only want to make this bigger. So I'm just going to scale, I'm just going to scale up like that. I want to make the facial features a lot bigger on this guy here. Possibly bring up closer like that. A lot happier with that. Just be aware as well when you're scaling up stuff like this, you may lose resolution. It might become a little bit blurry. You will lose resolution, actually. It'll become a little bit blurrier. Um, so you may need to go over the lines again or even just, you know, just give them a little bit of a sharper, sharper run over there. Um, but for me, that's that's fine at the moment. And it's going to really kind of work in on some details here now. And 
what I want to achieve with this person here. Finish off <clears throat> some of the, the eyes, nail brows. So I'm going in now to just add in some other details. Eyes are always tricky, of course, um, depending on what way you're doing the character, etc. I'm just going to fill in some details here. Possibly put in some lines and just make the eyes a little bit more convincing. Now to create more perfect ovals, what we do is hold, draw, hold down draw and hold down and you can see then as you zoom out it's getting a little bit more it's got a little bit more convincing there okay I'm happier happier with that uh, eyebrows as well then now I'm just gonna now that eye looks a little bit higher than the other one so I'm going to go to Again, my select tool, select this eye, my arrow tool, and just bring it down a little bit more. There should be a gap of an exact eye between eyes, so I'm going to get roughly in like that. It's a bit better. Now the eyebrow looks too far over to the left. Let's cut it down a bit. <clears throat> Actually, I think that eyebrow can that eyebrow could possibly changed a bit sometimes you're better off to even just take the other eyebrow so I'm going to select all over that one there like that and I'm going to duplicate it and um, I'm going to copy this eyebrow basically onto a new layer so I'm going to three finger drag down and what that does then it gives you some options you can either copy Copy all, cut, duplicate, cut and paste, paste. So I'm just going to press duplicate. So what that has done there, it has taken that eyebrow, put it on a completely separate layer on its own. That way it allows me to go to the arrow tool, move it across, go down here then to flip horizontal, and it flips a horizontal. So now I've got an exact eyebrow that I have on the left, on the right, um, and it might just help me get it a little bit better positioning wise okay it's it's getting there it's not too bad I'm still not convinced about the the uh, the look of the eyes so I'm going to go in and oh before I do that I have to merge down my eyebrow to my ink layer because I don't want them on separate layers anymore so I click the from selection where it says there of the eyebrow and I'm going to go down to merge down and that merges down out to the original ink layer. Um, so I'm going to just play around with this to see if I can make these eyes a little bit better for this guy. And I want them slightly squinting a little bit. There's just something not sitting right with this fella at the moment for me. Um, and I think his jawline is a bit not correct as well. The nose is a little bit off there. So I'm just going to bring that down, change that up, and what I'm going to do is use the liquify tool here to basically fix that jaw on if possible, just bring him out a little bit, I think he needs to be a thicker face, slightly thicker face, maybe just a little bit more of a chin. It's the eyes themselves that I don't think are working, so I'm just gonna delete those completely and work start from scratch. I think we need a little bit more of a simplified eye. So I'm gonna delete there, delete there, and use our two eyes positioning points there. a little bit more what I'm talking about now, 
Okay, that's better. Now, uh, I'm going to leave this guy for a moment. I'm more happier with how he's looking. Um, because the ears are kind of like in the hat here as well. Um, let's see if I can continue, maybe some hair just popping down and the beginnings of an ear perhaps coming in to the hat, like so. And and this is the way Procreate works for me is that, you know, I find I'm kind of refining a lot on the go like this. Now he's taken on kind of a, almost a different personality. Hair is always difficult. Um, you should really start from the roots, I suppose, and work your way down, but because this person's wearing a hat, I'm kind of working blind a little bit, so I'm just gonna get hair in there in some shape or form. Um, with the hair coming down from the hat there as well. So get that in as well. Put that across. Yeah, all right, and now our eyebrows a little bit more feminine eyebrows and our eyes are a little bit more larger as well. I'm going to remove that line. And now what I feel needs to happen here is the eyes need to change or something needs to change with the spacing because it's just not right. Our nose is too far away. So again I'm going to select the eyes Bring them down a bit, scale them up a bit. And no, it's just not working like that. So let's go to Lucify. And we'll start playing with these values a little bit more. Bring in her. Here a bit like this, just have it coming down. Definitely need to change the nose and the eyes, just not working. This character needs more lip definition as well. And the idea is that this character had, a, had their mouth open. are going. <laughs> I'm gonna get my sketch, original sketch back. Yeah, I can see how it is. It's it's very exaggerated, so that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think it's it's working with the way we've got it going on here. So if I zoom back out, I'm going to try taper in her jawline a bit more, just see if that works. just moving on a bit now in the illustration and I've got more details in on some of the characters here, a little bit more happy, happier with how they're looking. Uh, I've now moved across to the, the likes of the background elements such as the trees. I'm just adding in some, some detail on those and I'm not going too crazy, it's just, it's really just adding in sort of a foliage effect um, because what I'll be doing is alpha locking the layer um, where these when I'm putting in the color and using the elements there just to add texture overall. Um, you'll see that when I get to that stage. Half lock is um, something I use quite a bit and I really enjoy using it because um, it just makes pieces jump out and it, it also saves, it just creates a lot less hassle when you want to do certain uh, techniques within Procreate. Um, so here I'm just adding in some more bits onto this, these trees, 
they look a lot more impressive when they have color. So you've noticed as well that I have these kind of like shady lines that I've got going throughout the illustration. I've always used those, they, they, they work, they're kind of like a little cross hatching, cross hatching kind of style effect. Um, but I use those uh, quite a good bit in my illustrations. And um, there are actual cross hatching brushes you can get and you can download. Um, I have some downloaded already. And there, these are some here that you can get. You can buy, these are hatching brushes for example and they work well, quite well depending on how you want to use them um, and varying types that, that are available and thickness so you can see the hatching that's on the edge of that personally I'll, I use them when needed um, but for the most part I use the uh, I just do the hatching myself manually uh, it's normally not as intense as the hatching brush you just have a little bit more control as well I feel but um, they have their, their use when uh, for specific for specific areas uh, so I'm just going to add in a few more touches onto this and here to the bomb as well and uh, I like adding in these bits for so I've got the rubble etc in the background here so I can just add in extra bits of detail or whatever's going to go on here to reference if possible um, I'm kind of free handing this one a little bit I've no bolt to reference off I'm kind of going from my memory which is not ideal but um, for the sake of this piece it's going to be uh, I'm just going to use it I'm just going to go with the flow with it so I'm just going to keep working at that okay it's kind of in the background there anyway we can maybe get away with a little bit more but um okay it's gonna add a bit more here maybe put anchor hole here yeah, probably give the ship a name maybe or something like that as well i do a piece underneath like that okay now i'm gonna put more detail in on the foreground here it's gonna be the rocks Mid ground, should I say? And some, some of the water. And this is going to be like a slight waves breaking ashore. The background detail of the water. I'm just going to carry that down a little bit here into the foreground. These are slight waves. These are going to be colored in alpha lock as well. Um, depend, like again, you know, you could use the full black ink, you know, and just go black ink for the whole thing. But uh, in this, I want to use alpha lock uh, to color the um, certain areas of the illustration and just give it a kind of a lighter feel as well. Okay, so this is. Just rough ground. Going up again, possibly just rocks and stones. Okay, get that in there. And, uh, this is the, the slow part of the drawing, definitely. Just adding in all the extra bits and pieces, giving it a bit of texture and a bit of life. If this was part of a comic book or something like that, I'd have to be very careful to details then in, in characters and uh, equipment, things like that, you know what I mean, facial features, but this is a real one-off, so I'm not going to be continuing on these, these characters or anything like that, so it's just a one-off out of my imagination. Um, and I love those kind of illustrations. Uh, when you are doing graphic novels, 
and I've done a few, uh, you, you know, to keep the consistency between the characters can be very difficult. And I found that very difficult when I was doing my first few uh, graphic novels. Um, you, 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 there'd be certain characters you could draw no problem, repeat, repeat, and then you go back to do another one, and it's just oh my goodness, it it, uh, it took forever to remember what they looked like, or you just you know just got it wrong, or just a certain angle of the character, etc. Um, didn't work out. I'm actually gonna bring that back. So, you know, you just got to keep working on it. Uh, now this bridge here, again, I'm going from memory, so look what this is going to be like, where the captain, etc. will be, or, in this instance, looking out there, windows, and let's try and continue that down there. Okay, great, I'll do. Maybe we'll do some sort of tower, coning tower, is that what they're called? Or some sort of radar piece. I don't want to do another. Um, maybe I will do another stack, actually. Okay, I'm doing just hold down to get that more accurate curve. Maybe the second stack. Sure, why not? There we go, Marius Grant. Now, so it's like the Titanic or something like that. Okay, now, uh, continue on. Uh, we need some sort of more, some more details here. Maybe some doors, porthole, something like that. Yeah, that's enough. Right, zoom back out, and we can see that their detail is starting to come together a bit, putting more mumps and bumps and rocks and hatching. Get the hatching in. And, uh, you know, depending on sunlight as well, I mean, uh, the, the sunlight in this, I'll probably come from right to left. Um, see how that works out. Seems to be the way a lot of my, um, a lot of the shadows are kind of working out for me here. So we'll, we'll go with that. Um, again, that's something you decide a lot earlier in the illustration process, but this is very much kind of ad hoc actually. So I um, hope you're enjoying it. If you, if you are enjoying it, uh, I'll do the corny old like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be much appreciated because uh, I really enjoy doing this and I plan to make a lot more of videos like this. Um, so hopefully they're, they're of use to people. Um, okay, so, I mean, I don't want to overdo this either. Um, I'm very conscious of time in the video, and I really want to just get a across the point of how to do X, Y, and Z. So I think I'm gonna end the detail piece in a moment, and just add in a few more bits here and there. This guy in the background, I love actually. He's just kind of, what's going on? He's a bit of a strange old character. Um, all right, okay, next, last thing then is, the last thing we did was the smoke coming out of the hole there on the side of the ship. So I'm just gonna make that hole, just fill that there, and you can see we have the like it's a scrape marks or something you know I would do a lot more detail on a, a full illustration like this but I think for as I said I don't want to overdo it for the tutorials so let's just keep it basic enough okay so that'll do for the moment um, 
the badge here is going to be, I don't know, an expedition badge or something related to to the characters. It's going to be like a, you know, sort of a stitched on badge. So maybe put in some stitch marks and come up with some sort of title or name for what it is, for what's going on there. Um, what we do? Let's make a circle. Uh, let's make a, let's make the old biohazard, bio waste symbol. It looked like uh, Rick's eye from Rick and Morty there. Uh, right here we go. Pokemon. Okay, we'll we'll do. Is that what it is? Nuclear waste. Maybe? Top of my head here with this now. I'm not referencing. Let's get it in. Get it on. I'm just gonna color it in. A quick little color in if you're coloring black areas like this and you have connected lines just click on the black or the color you've got up in the palette here and drop it in just see if you're doing the old coloring in kind of effect so i'm just gonna yeah like that. okay might not be perfect but look that's the crest that we're going to do for this guy here okay now that i've got pretty much all the details in that i want uh, i've tied it up uh, enough I think for this tutorial to move on to the next stage which is coloring uh, this is probably my favorite stage of all I love the coloring process uh, so let's get stuck into it so what we want to do first is set a background color I normally set a background tone for any illustration that I do um, as you can see we're drawing in white background that's absolutely fine but what I want to do is click on the layers and click background color I'm going to change it to something that will set the tone of the illustration. This is going to be kind of in the daytime. I'm going to be putting it in a blue sky probably. So let's get a blue sky background. And I'll just set the whole background tone. It's going to be the main sky. It's not going to dictate everything. It's just going to be a start. So it's kind of like, it's almost a mental head start. You can see, oh, I've got everything colored so far in blue. <laughs> so next, I'm going to make a duplicate of my ink layer. Always duplicate your link layer, ink layer because just in case down the line you mess it up majorly and you can't go back because you don't have enough undos, um, it's always good to have a backup of it there. So leave that, uh, uncheck it and just leave it there in the base for you to go back to if needs be. Um, so what I want to do then is just click down on any layer below your ink and just press plus. And we're going to call this layer color. So we're going to rename that. We're just going to call it color. And this is going to be our base color. Now, sometimes when I'm doing an illustration like this where it's got a lot going on, uh, where it's characters and background, I'll do two layers called, one called background color and one called um, just color or character color. So I think I'll do that in this instance because we've got background stuff and we've got main characters here. Um, and it's also cool because you can apply a different effect to the background then without affecting the, the characters uh, layers too much so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this uh, back color or background color I'm going to call it back color like so and I'm going to hold and drag it down just below color so that is normally the easiest one to do first or at least I lay down a lot of color so I'm going to do that I'm going to keep it on the syrup pen and I'm going to click on the black and we're going to make, pick a green here from our palette. Now there's loads of palettes, there's loads of things you can do. You can create a palette from an image, you can drag in an image or import an image in an image and create um, palettes from that, selecting tools. You can also go into the different harmonic values here and different palettes that they have preloaded. Um, I already did an, an, a palette from an image here. Um, which I've, I've brought in. If you want to do that, if you want to create a palette from an image, just hit the plus button here and do f new from photo. And you can just pick an image that you you know you can bring in and use. Uh, and it'll take the more dominant colors from that. It's, let's say for example, this illustration I did before, I just took that in and you can see it's applied all the main colors from that illustration there. It's really cool. So I'm actually going to use Okay. Got to 
change them to a earthen color just for down here. It's a little bit too light. Maybe something like that. <coughs> Not being particularly neat because I'm going to do the C probably after this. So I'm just still filling in the last bits of the background here. All our rubble, etc. So just finished there now of that section there. And just a nice little tip, a quick tip. If you ever, you're just kind of working away on one color here and you just want to move to this green as well because, oh, I forgot this tree down here. And you go, oh, I forgot this. Just hold your finger down, and what happens is you get this kind of swatcher tool, allow you to swatch anywhere in your artwork. So I'm going to swatch that green and just work away on the tree again, filling in that tree detail there, putting some color in on it, like that. And then again, if you make a mistake, say for example, I've just gone over the lines there into the into the ground, I go oh hold down on the ground and get the brown back. So you're switching between colors so easy you don't have to go up here every time. Same up here, look a little bit of mist there, I'm gonna fill that in. Oh, a little bit of brown there, etc. And um, it's just a nice way of being able to quickly grab colors like that. As you can see I'm just filling in any small little gaps that I missed. Selecting the brown, again filling in bits and pieces like so. So now I've got the background colors all done. It's time to move on to the main character colors and I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna go this time to color here, this layer that I've got above background color. Go, I could call it character color or something like that, but I'm just gonna call it, leave it as color. And we're gonna start working away on the color scheme that we want to go for for these guys so i think something maybe a little bit high vis for this kind of guy here because it looks like he is possibly handling something that is uh we've got the radiation symbol on so we're going to do something like he's got that orange high vis jacket on and work from there so now i've got the main colors from the foreground the middle ground and the background done and the inking more or less there as well it's time to bring it on to the next step, which is the shadows and highlights. And then we're going into the final stage. So to do shadows and highlights, normally what I do is again, create a new layer and create it just below the ink layer and above the colors. And I normally name these guys shadows and another layer then called highlights. Let's call them highs like that. And I normally start off with the shadows first. For the shadows, I normally pick a black and keep it on the syrup as well and start by doing one obvious shadow point. Now, you gotta pick where your shadows are gonna fall first. So I think I'm gonna go from right, top right, all the way down here to the left. So shadow is gonna fall from that direction. So let's just get some black in there first. And we'll do a shadow that kind of comes down like this. And then what I do is go up to the layers, go down to the shadows and see where it says N, click that. And we'll see all our different um, values there and filters. But we're gonna keep it on normal for the moment. I'm just gonna bring it down until I get a kind of a shadow tone that I'm happy with. And if I just zoom in a bit here, you can see the shadow. And then if I go hit in, you see the way it comes up and down like that. So I have options to for the level of intensity that we want to bring. So I'm going to bring it down to about there, 40%. Then 
Then I'm going to change that to multiply because multiply gives a better uh, a better overall finish. I think when it's layered over, you can of course experiment and try different finishes. Overlay is very good as well. You get a lighter shadow that way, but it works really well over a certain color tone. It doesn't work, it doesn't work on white though. That's the only thing you won't see it. But um, that's why multiply will work on white. So I'm going to use that. And uh, and what I do then is just start basically coloring in anywhere where I can see the shadows will possibly fall um, and correct where you need to and adjust where you need to so what I'll do then is just fill in like this and start emphasizing that same principle then works for highlights I'll go into the highlight layer click on it click the color tool up here and pick white and what I want to do is just lay down some highlights first so if the sun is coming this way we're going to have just highlights around on the top of the hat here highlights will work different off different surfaces as well I suppose you got to keep that in mind as well um, so what I can have is multiple layers of different levels of highlights so we could have a 40% highlight on this layer maybe an 80% highlight on another layer for heavier stuff and then a really light layer of highlights and the same happens with shadows as well deep shadows and light shadows um, so we'll do the same I have the, the the white highlight in there you can also do yellow if you want or any kind of color that's you want to cast I'm gonna go down to the layer hit in again and this time I'm gonna bring it down to maybe about 27 28 percent you can kind of see what's going on with it there it's looking like that and now what I can do is maybe go and try an overlay and the overlay works well with that too I'm gonna to bring that up a bit perfect I'm happy with overlay and the highlights like that let's give you a look at what that looks like in a little bit more detail okay uh, and what I sometimes like to do with the highlights is when I have them in is go to the magic one tool here go to Gaussian blur and blur them so you get that soft edge of the highlight like that now before I do that I would copy the layer the original layer just in case I want to go back to the hard highlights but that's it so I'm gonna move on now and just start adding in the shadows and highlights Okay, so we're almost there we've got all the colors in we've got all the highlights in the shadows um, and small details so what we want to do now is just finish off the last little pieces so I have the smoke base color in so I'm just going to turn off that smoke layer of the outline so you can see that the smoke now that we have drawn in is there and can bring up and down the opacity to whatever suits I'll bring it around there maybe um, and could probably see what it's like above the ink like that and give it a bit of Gaussian blur by hitting the magic wand tool Gaussian blur it's just smokes give it a smoke effect kind of blurred like that effect and we might need to do some refinement on it so I'm just going to hit this guy here which is the smudge tool and if I need to bring some of that smoke in a bit, I need to do that. I'm going to bring that back down actually between the layers here. Yeah, like that. Okay, great. So we can zoom back out. See what it's looking like. Excellent. So now what I want to do is put in some uh, clouds in the background. I'm going to create a layer and bring it down right down at the back. Uh, we can rename it clothes if you want. Pick white and I'm going to keep it on syrup and start to build up some clouds. And because of the distance there, I'll have these guys kind of 
small enough in the background first and we'll just work away and see what they look like. And we'll leave it at that. You have the option in as well of just changing the opacity if you want to the clouds, depending on how intense you want them. Um, I might actually bring it down a little bit to there. And lastly then, I maybe want to put some sort of a little gradient on the, the background here, just where the sky is. Maybe go from slightly darker to a lighter. So I'm going to swatch the background color like that, holding down, and I'm going to pick a more rich blue over here. Bring up the size of my brush, and I'm going to just color kind of half like that. Oops. Undo, undo. Color about half like that. And I'm going to pick um, Magic Wand Tool, Gaussian Blur. And it's going to keep moving the slider across till I get it kind of like that. So now I'm going to bring that blue down a bit. It's a bit too intense, just a little bit. Maybe free form, and I'm going to scale it down like that yeah perfect now we're on to the final stretch so i want to go to um i'm just gonna bring that smoke down a, a little bit more i think in intensity that yeah that's perfect so now what i'm gonna do is just put in some um alpha layers or alpha lock layers so what what this is gonna do it's it's gonna make you add real extreme highlights and you can also recolor the ink to whatever color you wish so the edges of the ink so let's just show you i'll show you what i mean if i hit ink and we'll just zoom into say the hat here and if i click on the dominant color there the green click on the palette and bring it to a slightly darker tone like that okay now I hit it on the layers, hit once on the ink layer there, I'm going to pick alpha lock. And what that does then is it only allows you to draw on the black ink, that's it. So you'll see when I just randomly run this over, that green is applied only to the black ink. So you don't get so severe in color contrasts with the black. And I'll just select the texture that I've saved to my photo library and drop it in. Once that's dropped in, then I can scale it up to the size of the canvas. In this instance now, I'm just gonna rotate it and then scale it up. And as you can see, it's kind of taking over everything because I've put it on the top layer. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna hit multiply. And that adds the textures, properties to all the layers below. Yeah, and I just find one that I like I want to keep using so from all of these I normally use multiply and multiply kind of darkens the image though um, so sometimes what I like to do is maybe bring it below the ink and then just bring the opacity down a bit on it so you get a slight texture on it um, also you can try some of the other ones and you can get some cool effects like that I actually quite like that that overall look is quite cool. Um, it's kind of a washed out look, but it kind of looks a bit cold as well. So I think that uh, enhances the, the illustration in that, in that respect. So I'm actually gonna keep that. So there you go. That is the final piece. <laughs> so there we have the final illustration. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell and keep an eye out for further tutorials which I'll be uploading in the future. Thanks very much.